Welcome to an episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and video show which brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, and experience from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. If you're new to the channel, uh, please subscribe so you won't miss a new episode. I'm your host, Fritz Bussemaker, and today I'm delighted and privileged to have a conversation with Anastasia Kozlova. Anastasia, welcome to the program. Thank you. Yeah, Let me introduce uh, Anastasia. You're a, you are a musician a freelance concert violinist. You are the art director of your own um, uh, music festival and has helped a number of music festivals around the world to also start. You've won numerous prizes and recognition and has played with the world's leading classical musicians. Now, a bit more background. Uh, you were born in Leningrad to a family of musicians. Uh, for instance, your mother was a very world famous uh, harpist one of the top five harpists in the world. Uh, you don't live in Russia anymore, and we'll cover that extensively in the, the interview, a very fascinating family history. So again, uh, Anastasia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you for the introduction. Yeah. You are foremost a musician. If I read up on what your background is, it oozes music all over, is that correct? It is music all over, but... <laughs> You are a bit exaggerating. <laughs> that's fine. That, that, that's okay. The, the, the audience will be able to pick up uh, what's uh, reality. Now, um, as mentioned, you were born in uh, Leningrad, but at a certain point you moved outside of Leningrad. Could you uh, take us? Why did you move? Well, I, I was born in St. Petersburg, in, in Leningrad, in Russia. And uh, when I was... Uh, uh, 11 we moved to spain for the work of my father and when i was 13 we came to holland to the netherlands so right now i'm in the netherlands and uh, the reason was that my mother was very ill and we were searching for a better treatment and we were hoping to find it in spain and later we 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 found it in holland but it was quite too late so she uh, when we arrived in holland i was uh, 13 and when i turned uh, 15 she uh, she passed away yeah. Okay, and you, you, you and your father decided to stay in Holland? Yes, because my father got a permanent contract and I was at school and we decided to stay. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome. Um, now, we'll talk later about your own festival. Um, actually, we're going to do that right now because you organize your own festi uh, festivals. Now, there are a number of music festivals out there in the world. How does your differ f compared to others? Well, um, I started to organize festivals because I found uh, the world of classical music quite, how, how can I say, it? boring yeah. and uh, made for older audience. So I wanted to, to do it differently. And that was my drive to, to start a festival. I started my first festival in 2009. And uh, what I very much wanted was the combination of classical music with other disciplines. So I did music and sport, music and brain and uh, things like that. And I was creating my own concert programs and also working with with different, not only musicians, but also painters and scientists and, and uh, people like that. I, I, I think that it is possible to bring classical music to wider audience. Mm -hmm but um we have to make it younger <laughs> okay and did you succeed so this is by what the way. i did yeah. uh well um i uh, of course for classical music we have mostly uh, uh older audience that's the audience we have but um for example with festival groenefeld we are also doing music and fashion and uh and other things and jazz and i i saw that um yeah we, we do have young people they do come and do they do appreciate it and we even have young people who come for the first time and who are not used to classical music and when they arrive and they see it i i often get letters later from them like would you open my eyes and it is so beautiful i never thought about it and uh, well i'm very very proud of it and also in 2009 when i started it was outside and and free to people to come and it was very very open open uh, way and um we did have young people and i'm i'm really very proud of it yeah. okay no, well done uh because wh what will happen to classical music if you do not follow that approach, in your opinion? Well, 
First of all, we um, anyway, the world is changing. So, uh, and of course, also uh, after COVID, um, but it started even before, uh, we are looking different way at classical music and we are combining it a different way. And to bring our message, we want to bring it to the people of our own age. Of uh, We want to bring it to our friends. We want to make it younger. And uh, the problem with classical music, I think, is that people, when they're very young, they get in touch with classical music, uh, children at school, for example, or through their parents. <laughs> And then later on, when they go to the university, they they see also some classical music from from what the university has to offer. Uh, but at the moment that they start working, so they are about 20 plus and they start their own career, then it's quite difficult because you cannot influence them anymore. I mean, they are free. They 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 have their, they earn their own money and they know what they want to spend it on. So it's quite difficult to 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 bring them to to classical music because people think when I go to the concert hall, I will meet all these 60, 70 plus people and I don't want to be associated with them. I don't want to sit in this environment. So uh, in the classical music, what we're trying to do is really change that. It's really make it younger, make, make it more, more spontaneous. Like you can take your drink with you or something. We have also con concerts where you can stand or for example, example what we do we have concerts outside and then you can sit on the carpets you know in the in the nice environment so it's it's very open it's not not as stiff at, as it used to be before okay by the way what's your definition of classical music when does music become classical well that's a good question of course um it's it's an art form and we have contemporary music and classical music which is from baroque to to the to the day of today yeah. Okay, so classical music does does not necessarily have to be old music. No, not at it, all. Or is it defined as a particular style of music? It's a particular style of music. It's a particular way of uh, of uh, yes. Uh, it's a style of music, and uh, but we have a lot of differences in it. I mean, there may be trillions of pieces uh, written in classical music. So, for example, when someone says I don't like classical music, then it's a bit. Uh, <laughs> difficult because you have so much in it that i'm sure definitely there 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 will be something you will like <laughs> okay so i mean uh, it reminds me of uh, concerts in the past which combine modern rock music with classical music like a night at the opera uh, so uh, it lowers the barrier of people getting introduced to that type of music that's true. That's true. But on the other hand, I, I, uh, when I was uh, at a con studying at the conservatory, um, I had, I, I worked for for impresario who was organizing concerts for for elderly people, but also in the hospitals mm -hmm. and ill people, uh, also people of my age and. Uh, uh, in hospitals, and when we if we came there to play, uh, uh, this impresario said to us, "You know, you have to play some light music because those people they don't feel well, and it's not nice if it's too long. So it has to be like you know, nice and light and and friendly music." And then we decided not to do it this way. So we played real sonatas, which which take maybe half an hour, and we played really we played real real uh, uh, music like Ravel and and Saint-Saëns and, and everything. So it didn't matter uh, what kind of classical music it was, and the response was outstanding because at the end people came to uh, to us and said we are so happy that you you looked at us on a serious way. We want to be treated serious in in a serious manner. So when we speak about classical music for younger people it doesn't have to be light music or chrysler or some schlager you don't need yeah. that i we find that for example for classical music especially new music new classical music contemporary is very interesting for young younger audience because they want to discover something new they, they want their own style to see it and 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 it it appeals much more to them got that uh, now, this is a perspective on getting younger, a younger generation interested in uh, classical music. Uh, do you need to convince the musicians you invite to your festivals? Or do they convince them? Uh, yeah, that this is something we need to do as a community to uh, get that next generation on board. 
Well, you know, the, the world has changed right now in the classical music society. It was different when I started. It was really different. Uh, so, for example, in 2009, I had to explain people how it would be. For example, I, I, uh, I'm the, the, well, the, the founder or how do you find it? I uh, say it. I'm, uh, I found the concept and it was classical uh, music with yoga, which was strange because doing yoga with uh, with classical music or cycling with classical music, it was something, you know, something uh, outgoing. Yeah. So at the first one I was doing this, I, I had to convince my colleagues like, we will play music while the people will be doing sports. And first it was, what? They have to sit and listen. I said, yeah, but it is listening, but on the other way. So at the first, it, it did took time. But right now, I think it's kind of it's kind of normal. Okay. Now, these, these are a lot of creative ideas to promote classical music in combination, as you've mentioned. Uh, where do you draw your inspiration from? What, what uh, helps you create these type of ideas and concepts? Um, well, I, I, I want, I want to, to give something to people. I want to make a difference. I, and my mother died when I, when I was 15, she was 47. And I, I believe that we have only one life and, um, I, I really want to mean something for the, for, for people. I want to bring it. And, um, I, I, I would be very unhappy to, you know, to go away and that nothing will be left. <laughs> Yeah. So and and I, I I feel that I can change things. I I feel that uh, the the change is coming from the small man, the small person. So I think anyone can change the world. You just have to stand and do it. That's what I believe. So I look at at the world leaders. I look at, at the at the at the famous business people. Um, I I do a lot of courses. I read a lot of books and. Um, I, I look also at the at other worlds, not only the world of classical music, but also the world of business and the world of science and the world of politics. And I I, I try to learn from all of them and the arts, of course, and um, to learn from them and to create something and and to to make a difference. Okay, so uh, the passing away of your mother uh, is a very sad moment did inspire you to realize I want to contribute to something. Yes, yes, yeah. because I think that in her way she was doing the same, yeah. Great, okay. Now, as mentioned, uh, next to your own uh, music festival, you also contributed to help other festivals uh, being organized. Uh, are you using the same format uh, approach or no not really i always look at what people want and what they want to reach so i i try to help them to achieve whatever they they want to achieve and and uh, or to give advice you know or to, or to help in a way i can i did also some marketing courses and uh, a bit a uh, marketing study and um i try to 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 pass on my knowledge and the knowledge i got from a lot of people who helped me and who who gave me their knowledge and who, who, who I learned from. No. Good. Okay. Um, we can talk a lot about music, but I also want to touch upon your family background because you have actually quite uh, a family, uh, a family history and a family legacy, uh, which brought you where you are today. Um, as mentioned, uh, grew up in St. Petersburg. Um, but you are the daughter of an, uh, a, a Russian aristocratic family. Can I describe it like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can. Yes, yes. My my uh, great 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 grandfather uh, was a, a priest, and uh, he went to Alaska, and he became the the metropolite, so the head of the Russian church on uh, on Alaska and America. And uh, later on, he was called uh, pronounced saint. saint. So it's Saint Innocent of Alaska is my great great uh, father, and uh, my grandmother, uh, her uh, grandfather was the personal priester of of Maria Fyodorovna. She was a, a, a queen, a tsarina of uh, in in Russia, and her son uh, was the Nicholas II, so the last Tsar of Russia. Uh, so my grandmother was born in a palace because she lived with her parents and her grandparents. And um, uh, 
well, she uh, when the the Bolsheviks came, it it was really it was really very really difficult because it was forbidden to 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 come from you know to have blue blood and to uh, huh? yeah. how do you describe it? So um, they they became the, all the men went to prison. They were taken to prison, and and the women they became uh, they got a stempel in the passport, which which meant that they were enemy of the state. So uh, my grandmother had incredibly, incredibly difficult time because she was not welcome anymore anywhere. So being enemy of the state meant that you cannot get any medical attention, you cannot study, you can do nothing. I mean, you are nothing in the world. And uh, so um, she she had a really, really difficult time in it, and and she but but she survived it. And um, her her father and her grandfather they were killed in prison. And uh, my my grandmother uh, went on with with her uh, sisters sister and with her mother, and um, eventually she met my grandfather, and he was a German um, uh, architect, and um, uh, he he was building bridges, and uh, engineer, mm -hmm. and um, he. Um, during the Second World War, they were they were living in a wagon of the train, and this wagon was was going towards the the front. And so they stand uh, they were there like ten kilometers from the front. And every time the German troops would would blow up a, a bridge, my grandfather had to to build it up again. And my grandmother was helping he, him because at that time uh, the maps were uh, made by hand, so she was uh, she was drawing uh, maps at the uh, at the architect firm, and and so they 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 lived in this wagon for the the whole time as the as the war uh, went on, and uh, my grandfather he 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 brought animals and uh, every day because he couldn't see it all the animals you know uh, uh, being on the street and. Uh, so uh, uh, they had in the wagon like uh, 13 cats and six dogs and <laughs> and uh, so it was a difficult situation but but after war um, I mean my grandmother she she was really a huge example for me she was the son because she 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 survived it all and she ended up as a very bright person I mean for example, her son was taken to Siberia because he was he was also enemy of the state and she couldn't get him back for many years. And and um, I, one day I asked her, how is this possible? How, how did you manage it? How did you do it? Because, in fact, I knew nothing about my family. It was kind of for, uh, dangerous to know where you come from in the communistic era. So uh, my grandmother never talked about it. I, I didn't know anything. So um, when I was about 17, one night she was staying in my in my room and uh, she, she told me the story. And then I was absolutely flabbergasted. I, I, I never expected this. So she told me the story of my of my family. And 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 I asked her, how did you survive? How did you survive this? Because she she was so bright. She was so friendly and, and he, people love uh, loving people. You know, she was never bitter or, or angry or it, it, it was really a bright, bright woman. And I asked her, how did you manage it? And she said, well, you know, every time uh, she had kind of um, a, a thing because she 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 brought me up. So we were living in the same room and every morning she would open the curtains uh, very loudly and just sing to the sun. And I was like, oh, my God, no, not not this, because, for, you know, for a young person, it was horrible. And then uh, when she told me the story and I asked her the question, she told me, you know, this was my survival because the only hope I had was looking out of the window and, and, and greeting the sun because then I knew that the world will go on. The sun will come every day and one day there will be a day when, when no war will be anymore and no no bad, bad people and and yeah. And it will be bright and happy. So this was her her way of surviving. <laughs> what I find very fascinating about your story, Natasha, is you have real life experience uh, through your grandmother, through your family history, of things we normally read in history books. Uh, all of a sudden, you bring it very you you bring it to life. You bring it uh, very close, and what that means. Um, uh, just wondering. <clears throat> It's just an observation. I don't, I don't have a really a question about it, but um, uh, I was just 
maybe trying to see, uh, to understand um, when you were 17 years old, when you found out about this history, did you believe it immediately? Did you verify it? Yes, of course, I was verifying it. It was, it, it, it's, a, it's a, I mean, what I told you, it's just like 5% of yeah. the, of the things she told me also about war and also about other family members and the history of them. And um, actually, I couldn't believe it because I had no idea. I only knew, of course, that my parents, the, 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 the well-known musician from Leningrad Philharmonic. I, I, I remember when, when I was young, I, I remember that, that, that my, my parents, for example, sometimes would tell me this you cannot say at school or this you cannot say to other people. And I was wondering, you know, why? No idea why. And uh, but I, I, I did understand that something was going on. I, I remember that when I was a kid at school, I, I draw a, a portrait of, of Lenin because we had to, to, to draw a parade of five, uh, you know, five, five May or uh, yeah. and and um, so I draw the parade and all the people walking there and, you know, with with banners and then the, the Lenin and the, the Marx and the Engels on it. And then then I was kicked out of school. And then it, there was a huge scandal because it apparently in the communistic Russia, there was only one painter who was allowed to, to, to draw Lenin. <laughs> okay. And it, of course, it, it went the, as, as far a as a small, uh, young schoolgirl not allowed to create that painting. No, but nobody told me. I mean, I was seven or eight, something like this. So um, after this, my father came to school, you know, with flowers and it was a very charming man. So they yeah. said, okay, you know, she could stay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was quite a shock. So uh, when my grandmother started starting to tell me, and after those experiences, I, I did understand that 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 it it might be. T I mean, it might be that way that she couldn't tell it to me before, yeah. Yeah. and probably she also thought that I was too young. I do remember the time when she got a letter, and I was maybe uh, eleven, and she got a letter from the state saying that that her father was executed. Um, and uh, I remember that it was written there kind of, we are sorry to inform you, but he is executed there and there, which was, of course, all secret, all kept away from, from her and from the family. And it was written there like we accused him of that and that, and we are sorry for that. It was, a, it was, a, it was wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. And I, I remember her shock, and I, I did remember it as a kid that something really huge happened in the family. But of course, I had no idea why. Yeah. And in Heinz, you found out later what happened. Now, uh, uh, understanding that family history, how did that, ha, ha, did it have any influence on music and what you do with music? Yes, I, I, I think so. I think so. I think that it, I, um, I, I was influenced by my grandmother a lot by, by the way she brought me up uh, in the in the a bit traditions of, of the way the, the, the woman should be also kind of the, the Russian aristocratic uh, uh, way of, of, of being a lady and um, it, it did it, it did influence a lot the, the um, also the, I, I I don't know I, I think it's I I always try um, to 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 bring something good you know to to mean something I al always try to follow I think that my great great father the the Saint Innocent he brought kind of light to people because what I what I was reading about him later on uh, there were a lot of books uh, written about him and people who met him at his time when he was still alive, uh, they were uh, they were writing about a very tall man of almost two meters and uh, he was very, very friendly and kind and they were writing about somebody extraordinary, which is a saint and, and this is really kind of awkward because the, the person was still alive, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And um, so I, I think I, I try in, in what I do, I try a little bit to keep the, the family history alive and, and to, to really bring something to people, to mean something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got that. Uh, now, thank you for that, Anastasia. Anastasia. Now, uh, in, in this context, you just describe what you do with music, uh, family background. Uh, what does this mean for how you define success? Is it, is it for you uh, um, something you think about? Yes, it is something I think about the whole time. 
and often. And uh, success for me is not um, it's not the fame. It's not not the, not the money. It's 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 not about that. It's it's not about yourself. I think success is when uh, I really give something to other people. When when I get feedback. You know, when I get feedback, when I touch somebody, when somebody uh, did something different way or opened the eyes or or when, when something happens in, in other people's hearts, that's a success for me. Great. Hey, um, two more questions, if I may, Anastasia. Uh, first of all, um, give uh, are you able uh, able and willing to comment on the current state of affairs in Russia? What yes, I I will. Yes, I um, yes, I I um, I'm really deep uh, saddened by what is happening. I think it's it's absolutely horrible, and I I I think I I cannot understand that this is happening, and and it's very difficult to accept, and uh, and very difficult to to look at it. And I was sitting at home and looking, and you know, at all this those news, and and being incredibly sad, and 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 at some point I thought I I cannot sit still, you know, I cannot do nothing because it it doesn't feel right for me. I should I should I should use. Uh, maybe the ability to organize things to to mean something for other people to to be able to help on a way so i started to organize benefits and to raise money for for ukrainian musicians in in need and uh, for for elderly people and for 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 young people from ukraine but also people who who flee to holland so the people who are living in the neighborhood and uh, i worked with different theaters and i uh, uh, as a singer theater in lare but i also worked with rotary clubs which helped me a lot in in organ in 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 support and and we, uh, I was raising money together with uh, with artists. We created uh, different programs. In all the programs, I tried uh, to do kind of the same concept as I do with my festival. So there was also ballet, and uh, we had also uh, we had also uh, some fun in it. And uh, there was uh, there were different different musicians, also uh, a lot of musicians who fled from Ukraine and and ballet dancers and. Uh, yeah, the, this is kind of my way of, of, of giving something to people, doing something. Yeah. Well, you've been very successful. You know how to create movement. You know how to create a crowd. I've been following what you've done and you've been able to influence lots of people to uh, follow this. Uh, so uh, well done there. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, final question. Uh, how, how do you want the world to, your, uh, to remember you? Oui. <laughs> How, um, well, first of all, I think as a as a um, people, people, a person, you know, as somebody who who really cared, as somebody who helped others, and um, hopefully as somebody who contributed something, who changed something, who brought innovation, and who. Um, who really help people to 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 love classical music or to do more with music because I think it's also great for the for the brain and for the the whole development, and I I hope I can contribute and do something which will will bring the the world further. <laughs> well, uh, just looking at what you've accomplished so far, I think uh, hope has become reality because you've done that. So uh, well done. It's been. Fascinating, Anastasia, to talk to you about your family history, your own background, how you uh, are there. And I wish you lots of success with your future uh, music festivals, uh, with the Benesset concerts. And I will definitely attend a future one uh, and come and see you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best to you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.